This is the Brisbane Lions Fancast with Dom Fay and Michael Whiting. The last preseason match is out of the way, Mike, and preparations are right into gear now for round one. Yeah, all the talk's just about done, isn't it? We've seen the three matches and seen what Brisbane can and can't do over those over those three matches. So only uh, about a week and a half until the first game, so it's getting close. Yeah, we both uh, went up to Burp and Gary on the weekend. I was there as a spectator. You were there working. Uh, what were your initial observations from the game? Did you Did you get much out of it? Yeah, I got little bits out of it, I think. Probably the same as most people that went there. I guess um, it was a terrific day for a start. 6,000 people there. It was a great initiative to put the game at Burp and Gary. The facility was uh, was very good, and the players said it was a, a nice surface. So from the, the standpoint of the day, it was a good exercise, and it also means that Brisbane can stay in Brisbane to play a pre-season match, which the less travel they have to do, the better. So from that point, it was really good. But from a playing standpoint... I think we saw a lot of what we'll see through the season. A very competitive Brisbane, super competitive around the stoppages, around the ground. They didn't get opened up easily, but they struggled to score. So I think we'll see that competitive nature, but they've really got to try and find an avenue to to goal, don't they? Because that was what we saw, a a team that was uh, confronting, competitive, combative, but just struggled to score. So Now, in an article you published earlier this week, you did actually write a comment about the game plan that I thought was very interesting because obviously there's been a lot of talk throughout the preseason. What is this game plan? What's it going to look like? We got a bit more of a glimpse on Saturday, but the quote that you used, uh, that you, you wrote, was um, that we're trying to move the ball in a way that allows the defence to be already set up if there's a turnover, which I think is, is probably the best encapsulation I've heard of the game plan yet. Mm. And I suppose if you can say that's the game plan... What do you think then is the validity of that as a game plan? Do you think it's a good one? Well, I think it's a starting point, isn't it? Because uh, we always hear that def- uh, premierships are won on defence, and we don't just mean the back six. Modern day footies defence all over the ground. So I guess you're limiting your losses to start with, or you're building. That's how you build your foundation. Once you're comfortable in that foundation, and once the players know exactly where they're moving and where they're going with and without the ball, I guess then the, the offence or the the attack will come from that. So I think it's a building block, and that's why I think this game plan uh, will will take a while to evolve. Yeah, well, last year I think we were very much a momentum team, and that would mean that, you know, for example, in some matches we had all the momentum in one quarter and we storm mm. ahead like the Geelong match where we won in, in incredible circumstances. In many other matches, the other team had the momentum and regularly early on in the match would put on many goals on us. It's I do a, it's an, sorry, Norm, it's an interesting thing, Mo. I'm interested to hear from your perspective, as a, as a, particularly as a fan. Yeah. Do you prefer to see that uh, razzle-dazzle sort of type of footy we saw last year where Brisbane could pile on six or eight goals in a hurry but just as easily be opened up? Or do you want to see that, that uh, grittier, more determined team that'll, be, that'll battle away the whole game but but might not score goals in such a hurry. It's an interesting... I mean, <laughs> yeah. as, a, as a, this purely as a fan, this is. like. Um, it's, know, it, look, I, I definitely see where you're coming from in terms of the dilemma there, but personally, I think as a fan, I want to see finals. And I do think that this new game plan, which is one that teams will find it much harder to get six to eight goals in a hurry mm. against, is more likely to, to result in finals. I mean, you're not going to make the finals with a, a, a game plan that relies solely on momentum bursts because you're going to be opened up just as quickly the other way. So I do think that Lepich's game plan at the moment is, uh, and this is a comment I haven't made yet, but I think it's being a bit harshly judged for its lack of uh, offense. I do think the offense is underdeveloped at the moment. I think he's starting with defense and working towards, you know, building the, the attack in. But I do think, and I'm not sure if you agree with me on this, but I think that it would be an incorrect assumption to say that, that it's going to be an overly, if not completely defensive game plan. I don't think for a second we're going the way of, of for example, Ross Lyon at Fremantle here. No, I think that's just the starting point. And, and we've also got to remember that Brisbane's got to have the cattle to play that attacking <laughs> game. Like, that, let's be honest, it's a very young team. And there's a lot that the forward line in its entirety, which isn't the, which isn't the only measuring stick for for a team's attack but that forward line aside from Jonathan Brown is very young they're still trying to develop key targets etc etc so I think that that defense is the great starting point and you build from there and that's going to take time not only do they have to learn what Lepic wants they have to implement that in the fourth quarter when they're tired and we all know you make mistakes mentally and physically when you're tired so to ingrain that for a full four quarters is just going to take some time. So people have just got to be patient. But I think we can definitely see from the past two matches, particularly when Brisbane's played their best 
or run out their best team, that you can definitely see there's a structure and you can definitely see there's a, a game plan and a thought process behind what Lepic has brought in. You know, it's it's a bit funny because I think uh, you and I first met probably about almost two years ago now. We, ca- we caught up for coffee one day and I remember we were chatting about footy and we, we discerned that the number one issue confronting the Lions was the lack of any young coming through key forward who was going to take over from Brownie. We sit here two years on and I, I feel like that is still the number one issue and it's getting more and more urgent <laughs> it's by funny, the day. I say, to, I say this to people a couple of times in the last month or so. One of the, I think one of the biggest, I don't know, indictments, a strong word on, on the lines is that uh, Brent Staker was used as a key forward a, a couple of years ago and he's had successive uh, knee surgeries. Brisbane's no closer to finding a key <laughs> forward in his absence. I mean, there was one key forward aside and even in that time Brownie missed matches with his various facial injuries but just the fact that there hasn't been someone unearthed in that time I guess is the biggest indictment we're still in that same um, position like you say and that's that's probably still to me that's the biggest that's, that spot's still up for grabs come round one yeah. whether Brownie plays or whether he doesn't there's still a key spot up for grabs. I must say going into this season though I'm more confident than I have been in previous years that that future key forward may be on our list and I'm not sure if it's Jordan Lyle if it's Jonathan Freeman Jackson Payne um, or obviously Michael Close, but I, I feel like that future key forward may well be on the list. And I think uh, if there's one thing we can hope to get out of season 2014, it's for one or two of those guys to stand up and, and give us a bit of confidence for the post-Brownie era. Absolutely. And we'll probably touch on this a lot more next week on the on the eve of round one. But to me, I, I had to pick a, a round one 22 for our, for our website, afl.com, um, in the past week. And I, and I picked that team. But for me, the the one outstanding spot that's still up for grabs is that key forward. I think if Brownie's fit, although there's a big question mark over that now, I'm 50-50 as to whether he's going to play. Uh, there'll be Brownie, there'll be Luke McGuan, and then I think that's, that next spot's still up for grabs with Brent mm. Staker injured now. I had Jordan Lyle in that team initially. It's looking more unlikely that he's going to grab that spot for round one, but Michael Close has played some footy. We've seen a bit from him. Marco Paparone, slightly smaller um, key position player not so much the key position but in line for that spot so that's still really up in the air that, that yeah. spot for me yeah I mean the one who I would like to see get a chance to fill that spot because I rate him quite highly is Jackson Payne but he has had an interrupted preseason mm. and I don't think we'll be seeing him in the He's seniors still a until layoff, yeah, I think, yeah. a little bit into the season uh, just briefly before we move on to our chat with Mitch Golby there has also been a lot of talk obviously this time of year leading into the first uh, lot of games this weekend there's been a lot of talk about predictions for the we upcoming season we all have season. to make predictions Dom yeah we all do <laughs> we made ours a few weeks ago and, uh, and all the other journals are making theirs too. Now, there's been a lot of doom and gloom forecast for the Lions. In particular, earlier in the week, there was the article in the Australian from Greg Denham that uh, has said that the Brisbane Lions will be the basket cases of this season, uh, saying that we are only an injury or two away from being favourite for the wooden spoon. Now, this is typical of a, a, a perspective, a viewpoint of the Lions that is, I think, becoming more and more popular in the media consensus. Obviously, you and I have a better idea because we are so focused on the Lions of what's going on at the club than some people down south might. Do you think these articles are pretty <laughs> wide of the mark? Well, when you're looking from the outside, I guess it's e- and you've got to make these um, journalists, I guess, have to make uh, predictions. They have to make assumptions on what they've seen. And from the outside, what they see is a new coach, five players walking out, a new board, how can any uh, an aging uh, champion in Jonathan Brown, lots an aging <laughs> and, a, and a lots of debt, an aging champion in Simon Black yep. who's retired? So, if, when you just line all the, line, line everything up like that, it doesn't look great. But I think calling the club a basket case for this year is you know possibly a a tad too far. But as we predicted a couple of weeks ago, neither of us think Brisbane are make the top eight. Got to be realistic. If they do, that's a bonus. But to say that they're going to battle for the wooden spoon, I don't think that's the case either. I think there's, you know, at least three or four or five teams significantly uh, starting significantly behind Brisbane this yeah. year. Yeah, of course, we're not, uh, I can't take them off high ground completely because I did make a prediction a few years ago when Ross Lyon came to Fremantle with of no knowledge apart from the fact that it was a bit of a messy split with Mark Harvey that they weren't going to make the eight and were going to be near the bottom. And look how that turned out for me. <laughs> <laughs> so you can make predictions occasionally when you're not entirely... Uh, focused on what's happening at the club, which I think a few journos have, because you can't be across every, in and out of every age. That's club, right, and so. you can't, and that's exactly right, and you can't put, uh, I mean, at this time of year, every club's got high expectations, and there's, you know, there's 14 <laughs> clubs that are going to make the top eight, so. There's, there's 18 only, there's clubs only, who had the best preseason ever. Exactly, so <laughs> it's uh, it's a difficult art, but I think the the doom and gloom is just a bit too far for me. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think, as we touched on, 
Brisbane might struggle, but I don't think they're going to be a pass here. I think they're going to be very, very, very competitive. Yeah, I completely agree. Coming up on the Fancast, we're going to chat to young defender slash midfielder Mitch Golby. The best way to keep track of everything Lions is to head to lions.com.au. It's the first place to find the latest Lions news and videos, get the lowdown on upcoming games, results and player stats. There's also great ways to interact with live chats, downloads and player of the year voting updates. And with a social media hub, you can connect with all the Lions social media activity. Lions.com.au. Everything Lions, all in one place. We're joined on the Fancast today by our first ever returning guest. He did chat to us last year and he's back again this year. Uh, welcome to the show, Mitch Golby. How are you going, mate? Yeah, good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, uh, we're both pretty well. Obviously, you've played your last preseason game for the year now. How are you feeling heading into uh, round one? Yeah, pretty good. It was a good, good hit out in Burfengary. Um, a lot of positives come from it. And uh, myself, I've played three, th- uh, all three of the nabs, which has been good after sort of missing a little bit of the preseason. Obviously, the first one was a bit of a bit of a blowout, but um, it was good for us to get a lot of a lot of young blokes in with a bit of experience and the, uh, to to get a bit of experience. Sorry, and then um, obviously start to play a bit more of an experienced side, building towards round one. So it's been good. A couple of solid hit outs, and you know we're starting to get. Get the game plan sort of a bit more down pat, starting to play a bit more consistently, um, which is going to be the main thing for us going forward. Mitch, you got a um, pretty brutal start to the year, playing uh, Hawthorne in Launceston and then Geelong back up here. Can you tell us what you learnt from Sydney? I mean, that was obviously a great sort of dress rehearsal ahead of those first couple of matches. What did you learn from those guys on on Saturday? Uh, yeah, obviously, they're um, very well known for their one on one defence and their. Um, their contested style of football. But we managed to beat them in contested footy on the weekend, uh, which was a positive for us. But the way they go about their footy and just how disciplined they are as a team, something that I suppose everyone in the comp sort of strives for. So that's something that as a team, especially a young team, uh, we need to start to get in place is that discipline and having so many blokes play their role week in, week out, regardless of what's going on, what the other team are doing, making sure that we're doing exactly what we need to be doing to make sh- uh, to get the win. You've been around the club for a little while now. This is your fifth season, if my figures are right here. Uh, I'm just wondering, compared to other pre-seasons, how would you say the feeling heading into season 2014 is compared to them? Obviously, there's always optimism heading into a new season, but has it, is it a bit of a different feeling this year or, or pretty similar? Oh, yeah, like you said, you go into every season um, pretty excited and optimistic about what's to come, but yeah, it's certainly uh, a lot lot more excited, sort of a new, exciting vibe around the footy club. Uh, obviously, new coach, new game plan, whatnot. Fair few new personnel and a lot of young blokes that are really getting uh, getting excited and up around the footy club. And this is the best time of the year. The footy's about to start and everyone uh, everyone's really looking forward to it. And personally, I can't wait. Mitch, we, all we've heard in the pre-season uh, is about the Leopards' new game plan and what it's going to bring and how it's going to take a while to bed down. I guess for the people out there, it, from the outside, it doesn't look that difficult to implement a new game plan. Can you tell the listeners out there and the fans, like, what makes it so difficult to try and implement um, a new structure or a new system or what's so difficult about it? Oh, um, it, it is tough because, you, you know, you train the other way. You train other habits and other um, other ways that you want to play and then some, something else comes in and it may be... You know, there may be some similarities, which is really easy. That part of the game might be really easy to um, to continue to do. But, you know, it's another way, say, the way we move the ball. We might not want to switch it as much or may want to maybe take a lot more of an aggressive uh, aggressive kick. They're the sort of things that maybe not don't come natural straight away with the new game plan coming in. So it just takes repetition and, you know, practice for us to uh, to really implement it properly. In a few preseason games so far, have you found yourself uh, having having to hold back from old habits? So maybe about to go for a kick and then thinking that's not this game plan and, and holding back, or are you pretty coherent with where it's at at the moment? Uh, not too much. I've had a couple of uh, couple where I sort of went against a game plan and got on the phone straight away afterwards. <laughs> so that wasn't that wasn't too fun. But uh, it's starting to get it's starting to feel really natural after training it, like I said, for the preseason and then these few games coming in we've had a couple little scratch matches here and there but um yeah it's starting to feel natural for not just myself but a lot of the team and we're starting to get a lot of the things in place that we want to and like i said on the weekend was a positive hit out and 
I'm sure as the season goes on, we'll uh, we'll have it have it absolutely down pat. Just your own role then, uh, Mitch. Lepper said after the game on Saturday, he's still trying to. You, you were the one of one of the players he mentioned actually is still trying to figure out where's best for you. We've seen you as a defender or a back pocket or a half back sort of who's able to use the ball well and run forward. But he was sort of saying that you know maybe we're going to use him on the wing a bit more. Like what what are your thoughts after your f- first couple of games and and do you know where you're going to be used more throughout the season? Um, I'd say I'll probably play similar to the weekend where. Could be half back, could be wing. Um, I'm happy doing either. Just I'll do whatever I'm supposed to do for the team. And the the wing and the half back role don't differ too much. Obviously, the wing you can get get forward a little bit more. But in, as far as running patterns go, you get back and you help the defence out a fair bit. So the two sort of interlock a little bit, and they uh, you sort of end up playing a similar role either way. And with teams uh, that have say a running dangerous winger, a player like Myself could be uh, beneficial for the team to play on the wing because um, the defensive side of my game on the wing is uh, a little bit different to, say, a Sam Mays, who's really good for us as an offensive weapon. Mm. So I'm not sure where, where I'll line up, to be honest, but I'll prepare for both and I'll look forward to it. Uh, in saying that, obviously, though, uh, in that position, either whether it is half back or on the wing, there is an element uh, there that, that revolves around setting up the play. And you have uh, been known for some time for having one of the, the best kicks in, in the club. I'm just wondering, with a game plan that does rely a fair bit on precise kicking and, and good foot skills, do you feel that um, added, I suppose, uh, onus on you to, to step up and, and hit the target more often than not? Oh, yeah, myself. I. Um Occasionally have the uh, the odd shocker that doesn't go anywhere near where I was trying to put it, um, <laughs> which is a bit frustrating at times. So they're the sort of things that I have to rectify, and a lot of us do with a game plan like like you say that requires precise kicking. Blokes like Daniel Rich, Pierce Hanley, Jed Adcock, Ryan Harwood that are setting the ball up from behind the play become crucial for us. And obviously then the, the fellas in the midfield like Rocky that's just got silky skills become very important so personally yeah there's there's times where i need to lift my game but yeah we've got we've got plenty of blokes that are accurate enough kicks that we can implement implement the game plan properly yes just uh just another one on the on your um on your structure i suppose mitch like uh the the forward line's been sort of the the headache for probably a couple of years and finding guys that you can kick the ball to or, or bigger targets you can kick the ball to and that was again a problem on Saturday, what can you do between now and round one and then I guess as the season goes on to try and, I guess, generate more scoring opportunities or what we used to be working on? On the weekend, we sort of um, going inside 50. We didn't take the option uh, very well a lot of times. So our ability to uh, get up the field a little bit quicker and um, give our forwards good use so that they're not stuck in a two-on-one battle or like even two-on-two battles here and there, um, give them their best chance in one-on-ones will be important for us because there's times where on the weekend where we needed to move the ball faster or we needed to we needed to use the numbers on the way through to sort of draw their spare up and we, we didn't quite do it. So as much as you can say, oh, it's on the forward, they need to kick more goals, It's a lot of it's uh, from us ourselves that are behind the footy bringing it through. We need to, uh, need to get down there quicker or we need to be more composed with it at times as well so that we can use the forwards best and draw their, draw their spares up. We saw you uh, last year a few times sneak forward, kick a few goals, uh, probably most notably in that West Coast game at the Gabba. Do you think your new role in this, this new game plan from Leper will permit you to occasionally kick the, the odd goal, or do you think you'll be, uh, you'll be more setting up the play? Um, oh, yeah, I'd love, love to get forward and kick a couple again. Uh, it's always a good feeling seeing it step, uh, sail through the stick. But, um, yeah, obviously if I get to play on the wing here and there, that will uh, that should give me an opportunity to be able to have a couple of shots through the year. But, yeah, obviously if I'm down back, same same applies. If the opportunity comes and I get to run forward, then, yeah, I'd love to take the chance. Just on a bit of a lighter note, Mitch, we hear that you um, don't mind having a shot of alcohol the night before a game. Is that right? And can you tell us about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, uh, that was just sort of a, a joke in between uh, sort of me, Geordie Lyle, Roe Buick, Zorko. Um, we are joking around one day about Dragon's Blood and then I saw the wine. Um, in Dan Murphy's actually and I was like I grabbed it and just took a shot um, <laughs> the night before he came and sent us a, like, sent a little video to the boys just sort of 
having a bit of a laugh. So nah, nothing, nothing serious. How, yeah, how'd you play? How'd you play the next day? Um, it was before one of the uh, one of the little scratch matches. I did okay actually. So <laughs> I didn't. Uh, it's not exactly a routine. I. Um, <laughs> Routine I'll stick to. So you don't want to encourage that one for for young players out there wanting to make the, the top <laughs> league. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's probably not the best look, is it? <laughs> uh, just before we we uh, let you go, I did put out on Twitter that we were going to get you on the show and ask for any questions. And Jorgo's tweeted in and wants to know when you'll be getting your own Lions TV gig. Oh, I don't know that I'll be getting it. I don't think they're pretty happy with uh, the jobs takes us doing on Footy Fix. So. <laughs> Can't work you in somewhere. Oh, I don't know. Hopefully I'll uh, get a cameo here and there. (laughs) All right, well, thanks uh, for joining us on the show today. All the best for the season ahead, and particularly round one against Hawthorne next week. No worries. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me.